Étoile sur champ d'azur, tel devait être le drapeau de l'Empire du Congo belge selon la volonté de son fondateur Léopold II. Tel était aussi depuis deux siècles et plus le blason du grand institut enseignant fondé par Saint Jean-Baptiste de La Salle. Dans leur successeur, la foi de ces deux hommes de génie, leur idéal de civilisation, devait se rejoindre et s'exalter. Ensemble, ils contribueraient à la grande transformation du centre africain. Du fétichisme et de la barbarie, le Congo passerait au rang de pays civilisé et prospère. Pays des fétiches. Les croyances de l'indigène, ces pratiques religieuses sont dominées par des conceptions magiques. Ils redoutent les esprits malfaisants. Ils croient aux manœuvres des sorciers et jeteurs de sorts. Ils recourent aux fétiches dans l'espoir de se libérer de leurs envoûtements maléfiques. This film had a very specific function to introduce Congolese to European, in this case the Belgium, and to do so in a way that justify the colonial project as necessary and generate support among, among generate support for colonialism among European citizens. In short, they were just propaganda films. They're just propaganda films. <laughs> And propaganda has a very specific logic. You know, in this case, it was to promote the colonial agenda. To achieve that, filmmakers uh, presented Congolese not as people, you know, people with culture, with tradition, names, worth learning about, but as felled Europeans. Constant focus on differences which is always framed as negative, you know, like savages, ignorant, n I mean, name it, name it, you know, and which emphasize sometimes subtly, sometimes overly, the way we fell at being Europeans, you know, like Mango fell at being orange too, right? <laughs> but why, will, why would we expect them to be oranges? En regardant ces films, moi, je me suis sentie très choquée parce que euh, on a parlé de l'Afrique négativement. Donc, on n'a pas, on n'a pas tenu compte de, de, de cette, euh, de cette, de cette Afrique qui vivait en paix, de cette Afrique qui avait toujours un bon sourire, de cette Afrique qui, qui partageait, de cette Afrique qui, qui était unie. On n'a pas parlé de cette Afrique, mais on a, on a juste parlé euh, d'une Afrique sorcière, d'une Afrique, euh, euh, Afrique qui n'est pas évoluée, d'une Afrique d'illettrés, d'une Afrique de, de gens qui ne, qui ne réfléchissent pas. Et la première des images, c'était quoi Exploiter les mines du Congo à travers le mine du Katanga. Donc, les Congolais n'étaient pas intéressés par les colonisateurs, c'était beaucoup plus la matière première du Congo. C'est comme le DLA dit l'année dernière avec... Euh, Babalougou. Au Kenya, c'est beaucoup plus les safaris qui ont intéressé la venue des Occidentaux au Kenya. Et de même comme aujourd'hui, ici au Congo, c'est beaucoup plus le Cassiterite, le Manganèse et le parc des Virouga. Na Tukifata bien, musique, il y a un rôle important pour gagner les chaises à mon fil. Parce que ça n'y a tout le quoi pour le fétichisme africain. Et ça, tu le fais pour le prélat missionnaire. Ils font la classe en plein air, accueillant une troupe de petits bons hommes déguenillés, mais avides d'apprendre. Ils disent quoi pour les pôles, les trois carites, mais moi, il y a un mais moi, il y a un Bon, il y a des gens qui ont été en train de faire des choses, mais ils ont été C'est-à-dire, le christianisme est en train de Le christianisme est en train de Est-ce que c'est vrai C'est faux. Je ne me reconnais pas du tout dans ça. De, 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 c'est cette image du Congolais qui ne peut rien faire sans le Belge, ou du Congolais qui, qui n'aurait rien été si le Belge n'était pas venu. 
Pas du tout. Et pour preuve, il faut voir par exemple les, les images qui ont été euh, euh, pour le film « Le voyage royal » et euh, « Bonaki Toko ». Le film adressé aux Congolais était fait d'une manière à, à, à montrer que le Belge a fait de grandes choses et que voilà, vous devez, vous devez faire confiance à la Belgique, reconnaissant à la Belgique. Et, le même film, quand on va montrer aux Belges, on montre plutôt que voilà, la Belgique est une grande puissance et qu'il y a des, des pauvres nègres, des sauvages là, que nous avons civilisés, et nous leur avons fait accepter le christianisme et, et notre culture. Voilà. Ces points de vue différents, ce double discours qui existe toujours jusqu'à aujourd'hui, malheureusement, euh, euh, c'était important de, de remarquer ça aussi. Mais dommage que c'est des films auxquels beaucoup de Congolais n'ont pas accès. Comparison takes many forms in film. For example, um, basic things such as how people dress. You know, like Belgium wear white, and this makes them glow. Celestial creature. Also remember that highlight our blackness. Um, and I remember um, that the photometry was calibrated on a white skin. So when Belgium wears white, they radiate. And we become literally invisible, you know, um, cast in a shadow. There is a good example in a, uh, 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 le fonctionnement um, d'une bourse de travail. And disconnect to the psychology and analysis of an image, you know. The way the eye move in the picture is attracted by the most striking element in a shot. So white clothes attract the, attract the eye immediately. No matter where uh, Belgium are in a frame, the viewer's attention always goes to them first giving them the explicit and implicit power. Not only over the colonial subject, but even over the viewers. C'est-à-dire, au lieu de te dire clairement, il n'y a qu'un connu à esclave et tout à la quoi, tu es parti et tu n'as rien, tu as été à la bourse et l'esclavage. Bourse Tout comme la partie à l'autre, mon travail est forcé et puis on a été à la bourse. Autre chose, Bon, filmer avant petit chœur aussi, je pense, quand on peut venir à l'infanta, c'est qu'on montre que, voilà, Kouko, ah, ma noire est beauté, il va barbare, il va sauvage, mais où, 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 Dieu on a bien sauvé, Dieu va héros. Tous les réalisateurs, tous les réalisateurs dans le monde, ils font un film déjà pour, pour eux-mêmes. C'est pour soi, parce que c'est de la manière dont tu vois le monde que tu fais un film. Et après, tu le fais pour le monde. Euh, en regardant ces films, ça m'a frustrée et ça, ça a créé en moi une rébellion. Parce que ce sont des films qui montrent comment les Belges maltraitaient les, les Congolais, les, les Congolais, les Rwandais et les Burundais qui, qui étaient sous leur souveraineté. Hanyuma rero ikindi kintu kitanshimishije cyane ni uburyo aga umuco wacu w'abanyafrika abakurambere bacu bateshejwe gaciro cyane cyane nko muri filme ivuga ku myizerere y'abakurambere aho bagaragazaga ko imyizerere y'abakurambere bacu ari yo yatumaga babaho nk'inyamaswa zirwana nkaho ari byo byatumaga batagira ubumuntu mu gihe yuko zigereranya kagerageza kugereranya ibihe by'intambara usanga na hano bitigeze biba byaba muri Afrika byaba mu Burayi ku isi hose ariko iyo urebye uburyo bivugwa mu yindi mico mu bindi bice by'isi banyira byaba bivuga babitaka nk'ibintu byishema kuri bo byabateje imbere nk'ibintu by'ubutwari mu mateka yabo ariko noneho babivuga kuri twebwe 
bakabitesha agaciro cyane ku buryo batugaragaza nk'inyamaswa bakatwakuba umuntu kandi bakabisanisha n'umuco kwa dufite ntekereza ko rero ibyo ngibyo ari nk'igitutsi kumwirabura kumubwira ko imyizerereye umurage wa gakondo yasigiwe nabamubanjirije ko ari bumwe mu buryo butamuhesha agaciro bumwe mu buryo bumugira inyamaswa ntekereza ko ari igitutsi kuri twebwe I was struck by also some choice of of short um like in a in a, in a Congo terre de vive um there is this emphasis on um filming uh bare breasted women uh in a certain angle which um I can imagine that uh, um now it makes sense in a way that uh, uh women were looking at as object of sexual pleasure these are some of the ideas and tools that uh, enable us to recognize um, the psychological display of power in such uh, uh, films. Yeah. Uh, au temps actuel, ça représente une réalité que nous sommes en train de vivre. Prenons l'exemple quand on a pris le roi, le roi Nimi, qu'on a classé comme étant un chef uh, coutumier, Nimi, qui est allé faire des allégeances au roi. Bonakitoko, le roi Baudouin, comment se fait-il que le roi qui est roi autochtone sur son sol puisse aller présenter euh, des civilités au roi qui est étranger Alors que dans les normes de la diplomatie, c'est beaucoup plus l'étranger qui vient présenter des civilités, des civilités euh, à celui qui est là comme étant chef. Il n'y a pas un seul endroit où ils ont fait des interviews avec les locaux. Tu viens faire un film sur les Congolais, mais en aucun endroit tu ne demandes aux Congolais Qu'est-ce qu'ils pensent de ceci qui se fait chez eux Tu te donnes le droit de dire ce que eux pensent. Comment tu as fait pour savoir ce que eux pensent C'est ça la question. Donc moi je pense que c'est aussi ça, c'est ce manque de respect pour les Congolais et des pensées qu'ils ne peuvent pas eux-mêmes dire ou ils ne savent pas ce qu'ils doivent dire pour eux-mêmes. Tu sais déjà, pour moi la voix, c'est une paresse. En tant que réalisateur, c'est vraiment une paresse. Et, mais peut-être en 2000 dans ces années-là peut-être la sonorité devait être un problème pour ça et qu'on emploie une voix off mais on, moi je crois qu'on l'a employé tout simplement pour pour dire ce que l'on a envie de dire sur les autres au Congo pays en pleine évolution il faut voir grand donc c'est une direction que les gens prennent en tant que réalisateur ça veut dire que si tu mets une image des gens qui courent et que tu dis voilà ils couraient tellement vite qu'ils étaient fatigués, c'est parce que tu as envie que les autres le comprennent. Et c'est exactement ce qui s'est passé pendant ce colonialisme-là. Il y a aussi un film qui m'a plus choqué, c'est « Coup l'étoile au pays des, 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 des fétiches ». Ils ont réduit le, 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 une religion au fétichisme. Ils ont réduit un noir, le peuple noir aux barbares. Et dans ces films, si vous regardez ça, vous allez trouver, vous allez vous rendre compte, ils ont monté une guerre. Et en montant cette guerre, ils ont compris que le fétichisme rend, euh, nous amène à la guerre, le fétichisme nous amène à la barbarie. Euh, ils ont montré aussi qu'il y a trois, euh, que j'appellerais trois héros, qui viennent pour changer les choses. Organisateurs nés, alertes et joyeux, ébauchent des plans d'avenir dans une brousse sauvage brûlée par le soleil des tropiques. Ils sont venus dans ce film-là montrer la suprématie de, de l'Occident. Or, ce n'est pas réellement le, 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 le christianisme qui est la première religion ici au Congo. Il y a des religions qui existent, il y a des religions qui existent et qui continueront à exister. Je pense que les réalisateurs ou les, les gens qui ont fait ces films ont plutôt voulu créer une certaine identité qui n'est pas du tout l'identité des Congolais. Okay. Parce que dans les films, on voit euh, cette identité-là... Euh, euh, des sauvages qui sont très tus. Pas du tout. <rire> Ils ont eu la guerre mondiale euh, que eux mêmes ont commencé et nous, on n'a pas du tout été responsables de ça. On a eu des, des clashs des, des civilisations ou des clashs des tribus de temps en temps, mais ce, ce, ce n'était pas euh, comme eux racontaient. Eux racontaient comme si c'était le fruit de l'ignorance et qu'il fallait un Belge pour venir nous sauver.
Aujourd'hui, on continue à vivre la même chose avec beaucoup des organisations, beaucoup des organisations internationales qui sont là, qui nous parlent, qui aident les Congo, mais regardez ce qu'ils font. C'est la même chose. Et c'est ça, en fait. C'est la forme. Les gens travaillent sur la forme, mais les fonds restent la même. Et puis, on ne nous respecte pas. On ne respecte pas l'Africain, on ne respecte pas les Congolais. Mais on va aller où avec ça On doit réécrire l'histoire de l'Afrique, l'histoire de la RDC. Et on comprend aussi que dans l'image, surtout avec le pouvoir de l'image, il y a euh, cette falsification de notre histoire. Et c'est comme ça que moi, personnellement, je, je, je me suis engagé, je me suis dit que jamais je, je peux faire un film pareil, un film qui dénigre un peuple, un film qui, euh, qui, qui montre, qui, qui, qui veut amener encore une colonisation ou une humiliation d'un autre peuple. Je suis un peu plus fort. Je suis un peu plus fort. Je suis un peu plus Umunyafrika akeneye gutabera akeneye gutabera ku buryo agaragazwa justice euh icyo ngi icyo nicyo dukuye kubanza gutekerezaho tukavuga tuti ese ko abantu badutesheje agaciro ko badutesheje ubumuntu ni gute none tugomba gukoresha ubumenyi bwacu kamera yacu kugira ngo tugaragaze ubwa bumuntu bwacu atari ukugira ngo tubahamirize ko turi abantu ko tuko tufite ubumuntu ahubwo ari kugira ngo dusubiza gaciro abantu bacu babwambuye tubasubiza gaciro nigeza ko ari cyo twabakiye dutekerezaho muri gihe cyose turimo dukora filme tugatekereza kusho turimo tugaragaza yacu bwacu kugira tutazagwa muri uwo mutego nubundi wo gukomeza gukurikira gukurikira abantu on demande à la nouvelle génération de prendre conscience, de s'éduquer autour de tout ça et comprendre la force de l'image et pourquoi cela a été produit. Parce que pour moi, tout ce qui a été produit, c'est le problème économique au Congo. C'est nos richesses. Et ça continue jusqu'à présent. C'est vrai que Iko Choko, il a pour Kassiri Kisha, mais comme au cas spécialiste, on a analysé l'image, on a commencé le recul, on a comprendre le pourquoi il y a pour on a eu le film, joue. Oui. Uko, mutu mwenye anaweza weza kufanya oeuvre ya pre, yenye haita reprendre ile mamem petiz. Étoile sur champ d'azur, tel devait être le drapeau de l'Empire du Congo belge selon la volonté de son fondateur Léopold II. Tel était aussi depuis deux siècles et plus le blason du grand institut enseignant fondé par Saint Jean-Baptiste de la Salle. Dans leur successeur, la foi de ces deux hommes de génie, leur idéal de civilisation, devait se rejoindre et s'exalter. Ensemble, ils contribueraient à la grande transformation du centre africain. Du fétichisme et de la barbarie, le Congo passerait au rang de pays civilisé et prospère. Pays des fétiches. Les croyances de l'indigène, ces pratiques religieuses sont dominées par des conceptions magiques. Ils redoutent les esprits malfaisants. Ils croient aux manœuvres des sorciers et jeteurs de sorts. Ils recourent aux fétiches dans l'espoir de se libérer de leurs envoûtements maléfiques. This collection of colonial films is essentially a roadmap of propaganda and the way that propaganda was used 
to generate um, support for the colonial project in Congo, as well as other parts of the African continent. Uh, when dealing with propaganda films, there's a very specific psychology that underlays them, both in terms of the technical aspects of how films are put together and in terms of the narrative of what is told and, most importantly, what is not being said. In fact, one of the most important aspects of looking critically at propaganda films is to look at what is not being shown, what is not being communicated. And so taking these films apart has a lot to do with looking critically for what we don't get to see, what we don't get to hear about. For example, in the film Panorama Star of Congo, which was produced in 1912, this film came out very shortly after Belgium took ownership of Congo from King Leopold II. And yet in this film, we don't see any evidence of the kind of colonial violence that created the outrage that prompted Belgium to take control of Congo. We don't see any evidence of the maimed bodies, the hands and feet that had been systematically cut off of thousands and thousands and thousands of Congolese workers. We don't see evidence of the force publique, the, the colonial force that was responsible for perpetrating this kind of violence. Instead, what we see is a kind of optimistic industriousness that justifies the colonial project while simultaneously erasing any evidence of the violence that it perpetrates. The second example is the 1939 film Congo Terres aux Vives, in which a very consolidated yet one-sided narrative of history comes through. We hear, uh, for example, the description of, these, of a riverside village that would not survive, that is completely dependent on the Belgian steamships that come up and down the river, but there's no mention of the fact that people have been living next to this river for decades, for centuries, and they've survived just fine. There's no sense, there's no mention of the fact that this is, this is an indigenous response to a new economic opportunity as opposed to pure helplessness on the part of native Congolese. Another omission that's really, that's really glaring in that film is the repetition of praise for Stanley and all of his discoveries and achievements in the territory that, that became then the property of King Leopold II. But there's no mention either of the colonial violence that he, that he perpetrated against so many indigenous populations or of the very many well-organized contemporary resistance movements that were still being activated by Congolese who were resisting colonization even in 1939 as this film was, was produced and released. All of that history is strategically erased and what we hear instead are the, are the systemic triumphs of Stanley that laid the foundation for the glory of Belgian colonization. Those facts may in part be true, but again, when looking at propaganda films, it's essential, look, it's essential to look for and listen for what is not being shared. Les villages indigènes apparaissent sur les rives. Toute leur existence dépend des escales de nos bateaux et des petits profits qu'ils en retirent. Another example from this same film, still in 1939, was the description of the abandoned mine that becomes transformed into a swimming hole, which is a place of leisure and pleasure. But again, there's no mention of the extreme amounts of pollution that resulted in the waterways in Congo as a result of mining efforts and the many, many medical problems that developed for populations that lived alongside the river. There is photographic documentation of the ailments that developed in relation to the, uh, the pollution of mining, but once again, we don't see that referenced in this portrait of industriousness and progress. Une mine abandonnée, la mine de l'étoile, est devenue un bassin de natation. Another important way of looking for omissions when we're studying films of propaganda is to ask ourselves specific questions about how we get to see the images that we're seeing. Where was the camera? How were the images that are being filmed orchestrated? So, for example, in the film L'Etoile au Pays du Fétiche, there's a scene in which there's 
chaos. There is what the narrator refers to as savagery and brutality and chaos and warfare. And yet the camera is very static, surrounded by poison arrows flying hither and thither in purely chaotic fashion. And, and if one's thinking critically about this film, one might pose the question, why is the camera person so tremendously calm in the midst of what what is described by the producers of this film as madness, savagery, and chaos. And one of the responses is because this is a very choreographed scene, which leads, of course, to a further set of critical questions, including what was it that the Congolese participants were told was happening in this scene that prompted them to behave in this particular way? What were they asked to do? And did that have anything to do with the actual tradition, the actual cultural practices? The obvious answer is no. What they were performing was a form of humiliation that was designed to respond to a very specific request. But we as viewers of the film don't get to hear what the director asked the natives to do. We are told that that is just how they behave. Naguère encore, sorciers et féticheurs s'entendaient à fomenter divisions et querelles entre les tribus. Celles-ci dégénéraient le plus souvent en guerre fratricide, impitoyablement conduite par le jeu des armes empoisonnées. Qui pouvait soustraire le noir à ce joug satanique Le christianisme et lui seul. C'est à promouvoir son avènement que travaillent les frères des écoles chrétiennes dans ce champ d'action où se consume leur vie de dévouement l'école. Pour endiguer les méfaits du paganisme et assainir les mœurs, pour façonner les cerveaux et pétrir les cœurs, pour extirper la sauvagerie et créer une société nouvelle, les missionnaires se sont toujours penchés sur la jeunesse. We see a similar dynamic in the film Congo Terre d'eau vive when the camera arrives in the, in the pygmy territory and the pygmies flee climbing up trees in ways that we're supposed to associate with monkeys fleeing in panic of strangers. And yet, if we ask ourselves critically, how did the camera get there before they knew to flee, unless this was a very staged, very choreographed moment? And again, we don't get to hear the exchange between the director and the people on camera, in this case the pygmies. All we see is what is, what is presented to the audience as a natural response. So in these kinds of instances, it's extremely important to pose the questions, how did these images come to be? in order to start to, to recognize what we're not allowed to see, which are usually the kinds of coercions, the kinds of negotiations, the kinds of constraints that happen strategically behind the camera and get left on the proverbial cutting room floor. La route se rétrécit, ces ornières de limonite s'encombrent d'herbe et parfois même la piste disparaît. Mais qu'importe, il s'agit d'atteindre une race des moins connues, les pygmées. Voici un de leurs villages, avec ses huttes primitives en feuilles de bananier. À notre approche, toute la tribu s'enfuit, car ces hommes, les plus petits hommes du monde, sont timides. Ils craignent encore le blanc, mais ils sont singulièrement agiles, musclés et nerveux. context of examining the psychology of propaganda, there are a couple of themes that run throughout all of the films. One of these themes is nature and the way nature is depicted as something impenetrable and inherently dangerous that needs to be conquered by Belgium. And notably, nature is not restricted just to flora and fauna. It's not just the descriptions of the, of the dark and dangerous forests with the deadly animals or the violence of the, of the riverways, the waterways, and the animals lurking beneath the surface of the water. No, in these films, nature also applies to Congolese people. So there are many different examples that evidence this subtle conflation of people with the natural world when we're talking about Congolese people and people with the power to conquer the natural world when we're talking about Belgium. For example, in Congo, Terre d'Eau Vive, 
there's a parade of animals, each of which has its own rather comical soundtrack, musical score accompanying it. We see antelopes, we see hippopotamus, we have all, each of these animals has its own soundtrack. And then we get to the elephants parading in a very neat line, followed shortly by people also parading in a very neat line. And if you listen carefully, the music of the elephants is the same music as the music of the people. This is a subtle conflation of Congolese people as animals. And there's an argument, perhaps, to be made for the fact that the people are carrying elephant tusks. So there is a link between the physical labor that they're being forced to do and the animals that preceded them. But there's also, this is also a sonic reinforcement of the psychology that says Congolese people are essentially the same as animals. They are part of the natural world and they need to be conquered and they need to be transformed in the image of Belgium. So just as nature has to be transformed and in where once we saw wild forests we then over time through these films see very linear neighborhoods with houses all in a row we see uh, very symmetrical and impressive modern buildings hospitals schools cathedrals and so on so too the nature of the congolese that is inherently impenetrable dangerous and savage must be transformed in the likeness of the Belgian colonizer. This is a very dangerous kind of psychology and it's, 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 uh, it's, it's based on this foundational belief that African people are part of nature, they're part of flora and fauna as, a part of, part of, as opposed to being part of the human kingdom of which of course Belgium is one uh, of many European representations. amène les caravanes et, avec elles, la civilisation. L'ivoire sera la première ressource des budgets colonisateurs. Another example of this conflation of human and the impenetrably savage natural world, also from Congo Terre au Vive, is the scene with the pygmies that are presented as a social and anthropological project that needs to be solved by the colonizing force. Significantly, this commentary is immediately followed by a cut to a very impressive looking modern hospital that implies once again not only that the colonizer has the power to transform or to solve, in this case, the anthropological and sociological problem presented by the pygmy, but that somehow it's associated with a hospital, which is a place that people go when they have some sort of ailment or malady where something is fundamentally wrong with them. So this is another one of these subtle implications that there's something fundamentally wrong with this group of people. Les pygmées ou négrilles vivent uniquement de leur chasse. La forêt où ils demeurent n'a plus de secret pour eux. Et les animaux qu'elles recèlent se trouvent sans défense devant leurs armes de cintre. Leurs origines n'ont pas encore été bien définies par les anthropologues. Leur conservation constitue, pour les sociologues coloniaux, un problème délicat, mais qu'ils sauront résoudre. Après le bain de nature pris en compagnie des pygmées, 
que cet hôpital, élégant de construction moderne, ne nous détourne pas d'accoster à stan les villes une des escales les plus pittoresques et les mieux assainies du fleuve. A second theme that stretches throughout uh, this whole collection of films is power and that manifests in a number of different ways. Some of them have technical manifestations in terms of how certain scenes are shot, often from above, giving the viewer the perspective of looking down over Congolese people. Uh, one example is Panorama Star of Congo that starts with an extended panorama shot in which the viewer is quite literally put into a position of superiority, literally looking down on fields full of workers carrying out their labor. A, a second manifestation of power is the, is the power to represent people with or without their consent. This manifests in many, many, many of the films in this collection, including Fonctionnement d'un bourse de travail, in which there's a striking image of a family, husband, wife and children who clearly do not want to be captured on film and have no say in the matter and have been asked to stand static and hold the pose that was given to them while their image is, is taken for the purposes of this film, likely without them being told where this film is going to go, what it's going, how it's going to circulate and what it's intended to achieve. Another example of this power to represent with or without consent uh, is from the film Buana Kitoko that shows many traditional leaders who in their own cultural context have tremendous authority and power and yet whoever was behind the camera in this production clearly had enough power over them to depict them behind the scenes as it were, to show them in pictures, in positions of subservience, to show them in positions that culturally would be considered humiliating positions as they're preparing to participate in uh, a, a grandiose spectacle and they were not consulted about how their image would be taken and how their images would be used. This is another example of the power to represent and the fact that the story that gets told is on the terms of the person behind the camera. Le Nimi, grand chef des Bakuba, peuple de l'éclair, revêtu de son costume d'apparat qui pèse plus de 100 kg est conduit dans son carrosse vers la résidence de Luluabou. Après avoir parcouru 250 km, le Nimi arrive au rendez-vous du roi. Ce noble vieillard couvert de peaux, de perles, de dents d'animaux sauvages, de raffia, de plaques de cuivre travaillées, est ankylosé sous le poids des insignes fastueux de son rang s'affaire autour de lui pour le conduire vers son trône. C'est là qu'assis au milieu de ses fils et des dignitaires de sa cour, le roi des Bakuba va pour la première fois rendre hommage à son nouveau suzerain. A third manifestation of power that is evident in this collection of films is the power to write or to rewrite history. And this is evidenced throughout. I've already given examples of, of uh, references to Stanley. Another quick example from Congo, Terre d'eau vive, is the comment by the narrator that prior to the arrival of the colonizer, the river had no name, that the indigenous populations did not have a name for their river, which is one of the very um, common manipulations that presents indigenous populations as unable to claim the kind of authorship to name the spaces in which they live, which makes it a short step to taking that space from them. And this is the kind of very, very subtle manipulation that, that in reinforces the notion of inferiority on the part of Congolese populations and superiority on the part of Belgian populations who, of course, come in 
imbued with the power to name, or in this case, rename certain territory and consequently claim it for their own. So subtleties of naming are very, very significant and, and it's always worth paying attention in looking at propaganda films to the moments where names are erased. How many of the, of the Congolese do we learn, do we meet and learn their names? How many of the leaders and the chiefs do we learn to, to, to remember their names or are introduced by name? This, this, this uh, power to give a name or withhold a name is a very, very profound one and it's something that reveals a lot about the underlying psychology behind propaganda films. <laughs> C'est rapide, il y a 500 ans, ont arrêté Diego Cao, le premier visiteur portugais du Congo, auquel il donna le nom de Zahir. L'explorateur inscrivit sur ce rocher, à 150 km de la côte, à côté du blason de son roi et suzerain, les noms des caravelles et des maîtres d'équipage qu'il y avait conduit. Another manifestation of power is the power to inscribe limitations on another. For instance, in the film Le Lit Noir de Demain, we witness the elite class of Congolese studying at the more privileged institutions. And despite their successes, despite all of their capacities, there's an implicit narrative that limits their ability at a certain level. And this is represented quite palpably in, um, in a number of images we see, for instance, in the art class, as they're, as they're sketching the models in front of them, that are fellow Congolese and um, black bodies, that the art surrounding them depicts European Western classical art that is that prioritizes whiteness as the standard of beauty. We see the priests who run the institution clad from head to foot in white, always standing elevated above the terrain on which the Congolese students are allowed to inhabit. They're always watching from above, raining over, raining down, and that creates a sense that despite, despite the effort that Congolese put into mastering the skills and the knowledge that's being imparted, it's always being imparted from above and that there's a certain limitation to how far they can and cannot um, develop. There's always a ceiling that will limit the capacity and that is another demonstration of power, even as it ostensibly celebrates the capacities and the aptitudes that many of the pupils at this institution have. Evaluate, ils le sont. Mais il ne faut pas qu'ils se croient pour cela d'une essence supérieure à celle de leurs frères moins avantagés. C'est vers ceux-ci qu'ils devront se pencher plus tard pour élever la masse indigène tout entière. Non seulement la gymnastique, mais la pratique des sports en général est à l'honneur dans ces écoles. Another example of this kind of limitation is to take those Congolese who, who present a sense of dignity and to find a way to label them as other. For instance, in uh, Congo Terre d'Eau Vive, there's a, there's a shot of a Muslim man followed by his entourage of wives and various advisors. And by casting him, and, and, and the way that he's depicted is, is as a, the typical noble savage figure that he has a certain nobility, but he's cast as explicitly other, referencing polygamy, referencing the sort of uh, community style of his life as opposed to the individuality that is so highly prized by the European Enlightenment ideal. Sur la place grouillante, les types les plus divers se mêlent. Les moins pittoresques ne sont peut-être pas les arabisés dont le chef s'avance pompeusement suivi de ses femmes, de ses dignitaires et de toute une jeunesse en blanc. So this is a num these are a number of examples that perhaps draw attention to what we don't see and what we don't hear in these films. There's a proverb that says, history will always glorify the hunter until the lion has his own griot or until the lion gets to tell his side of the story. And I would argue that cinema is one of the most powerful ways of assuring dominance because it allows a group of people to tell their story in ways that the audience 
can't help but believe because they get to see it with their own eyes. And so when we're looking at this kind of film that is explicitly funded by propaganda funds, it is imperative to look at what we don't see, what we don't hear. In the case of Congo and Belgium's colonization of Congo, it was a fundamentally economic project. It was based on the resources, the natural wealth that was in Congo. And all of the signs of progress, all of the signs of civilization and uplift were tied fundamentally to economic need. And these films show the economic motivation for colonization, but they show it ent entwined with a civilizing mission, entwined with an educational mission, entwined with a religious mission. They don't speak at all about what is lost when economics is the basis of an exchange. So whereas we see the development of structures, we see hospitals and schools and churches, we see um, industry, we see mines, we see technology, we see modes of transportation, trains, steamships, automobiles imported, all of that is what's brought and what's added, but it becomes very, very difficult to see what is taken away. It becomes very, very difficult to see the absence of autonomy, the absence of dignity. And if we look for the tiny humiliations, if we look for the moments where people are forced to behave in ways that they wouldn't ordinarily do, because they no longer have the power to live with their own names on their own land, we can start to see what's also missing, what's being taken away, even as visible and physical signs of progress are being added to a given territory. So again, in summary, the exercise that unpacks, the one exercise that really unpacks the psychology behind this genre of propaganda film is to really tune our eyes and ears to what we don't get to see, what we don't get to hear, what's not being shown, what's not being said and what is therefore being erased. And all of those details are critical elements to the other side of the story.